Hello everybody, Justin Miller, Western College of Physics here. We're going to be doing a little problem involving some work done by gravity, just to reinforce some of the concepts that we had. So, we noted that if just a conservative force is acting, then the total energy of the system, total mechanical energy of the system, is a conserved quantity. So, let's just take ourselves a nice problem. Here it is. And we've got ourselves a mass of three kilograms. It's going to be thrown upward, and it's going to reach a maximum height of two meters from its initial location. So we've got some y initial, we've got some y final is equal to two meters. Let's just say y initial is equal to zero, so that we've got our delta y pretty easily set there. So we've got our object starts here, has some initial velocity upward, and by the time that it reaches up here, we know that its velocity final will be equal to zero, being at its maximum height, and we got, we got ourselves that this is a three kilogram mass, and while this object is moving, we've always got ourselves this force due to gravity acting on it in the opposite direction that it's moving, because it's going upward. So. We just want to look at things like what's the change of potential energy, what's the initial velocity, what's the kinetic energy at specific points stated in the problem. So let us just go ahead and figure out what the change of potential energy in this particular scenario is. Is it going from a lower elevation to a higher elevation? So first off, should it be increasing potential energy or decreasing potential energy? And the answer is, well, if it's going upward, Delta Y is considered positive in terms of mg delta Y, and thus it's increasing its potential energy. So, we start off with this. A delta PE is equal to mg delta Y, and delta Y is going to be equal to a positive 2 meters. So again, increases in elevation positive, decreases in elevation negative. So we're increasing the potential energy, higher up it goes, more stored energy that it has. So we just go ahead and quantify this out. Delta PE is equal to three kilograms times G times two meters. Yeah. Giving us about 58.8, not about, giving us 58.8 joules of potential energy, increased potential energy. All right, so now it's got all the stored energy. That's fantastic. What are some other things that we could ask about it? Well, we could ask, what was its initial velocity? We know that it's thrown upward, but we weren't specifically told this. Now we could use the equation of the motion for constant acceleration and free fall and all that stuff and go ahead and figure out VIs, but the point of this is we want to use energy considerations now. So, how do we do this? Well, we know since only gravity is acting, this is a conservative system, and we have that delta PE is equal to negative delta K. One way that we could write this out. So we already know what delta PE is. That's equal to this. That has to be equal to the negative change in a kinetic energy. So let's just go ahead and write this out here. We've got 58.8 joules is equal to negative delta KE. Well, delta KE can be broken apart into a KE final minus the KE initial. So we have negative the quantity of KE final minus KE initial. We can distribute that negative sign through, that's fine. And write this as 58.8 joules is equal to negative KE final plus KE initial. And then what do we have with this? Well, we've got that KE final is 1 half MV final squared, KE initial is 1 half MV initial squared, and we'll just write this all out, 58.8 joules is equal to negative 1 half mv final squared plus 1 half mv initial squared. So then we ask ourselves, well, what do we know about this? Well, if we know that its maximum height, its velocity is equal to zero. So this final term here, that's equal to zero. So we're left with 58.8 joules is equivalent to the 1 half mv initial squared. 
joules. It's equal to one half n v initial squared, which then allows us to solve for what v initial is. Go ahead and multiply by 2, divide by m, take the square root of both sides, and we've got ourselves that v initial is equal to the square root of 2 times 58.8 .8 joules divided by a three, yes, 3 kilograms. And we get ourselves. Six point two six one, we'll say. Six point two six one meters per second. And that was going upwards. Just throwing a little up right there. There we go. That's what initial speed I had to have. And how did we get it? By utilizing energy. So as again, going upward, it's decreasing its kinetic energy, slowing down, but increasing its potential energy, going up higher and higher, converting kinetic into potential until what? Until all the kinetic's gone and we have only potential left. What if we ask, well, how fast is the object going when it is 1.5 meters up? Say we got here. That is equal to 1.5 meters. V is equal to what there? So we turn the nice little part C here. And figure out what this V is at the 1.5 meter mark. Can we use the same idea here? The answer is yeah, only gravity's acting, so we can go ahead and say that we have conservation of mechanical energy, we just start off again, delta P is equal to negative delta K. What we have to be careful of is delta P E is not going to be 58.8 joules because we're not all the way up. It depends on the displacement, right? So we can go ahead and start breaking this apart a little bit, but ultimately we've got ourselves delta P E is going to be mg delta y. And that must be equal to a negative ke final minus ke initial so we can write negative one half mv final squared plus one half mv initial squared distributing the negative sign through both of the terms so we've got this right here and we want to figure out what is this v final when delta y is 1.5 meters well We've got this V initial here. We've already figured out what that is. That has to be 6.261 meters per second. So we can go ahead and take this and solve this out for this V final here. So a couple different ways that we could do this algebraically, but I just say, let's just go ahead and multiply it by two, divide it by M, and then we could subtract off, really add, excuse me, subtract off this V initial. So we'll do this in a couple steps so it doesn't look too messy. Multiply both sides by two. And write this as two mg delta y is equal to negative mv final squared plus mv initial squared. Good. We can factor out an m here. There's an m, there's an m, there's an m. Ooh. Ends up not depending on the mass whatsoever. That mass just kind of goes away there. So we could write this as 2g delta y is equal to negative v final squared plus v initial squared. And then I can go ahead and add, excuse me, we want v final. So I can make a little bit of a switch here in terms of the terms. And I can subtract this from both sides and then multiply both sides by an overall negative sign or equivalently move this over to this side and that over to that side write this as v final squared is equal to a v initial squared minus 2g delta y. Hmm, does that look familiar at all? I hope it does because that's one of the nice expressions for velocity as a function of displacement under free fall. And that's what we have here. We retrieve it. It's in there. It's embedded within the idea of energy. So, nonetheless, we still don't we can quantify this. We use complete energy considerations, retrieve something familiar, and we've got ourselves that V final is equal to the square root of this, which is 
6.261 meters per second quantity squared minus 2 times g times 1.5 meters. And we get ourselves a final. Should be pretty small at that point. Let's see, square root. That squared minus 2 times 1.5. Right. 3.130. There's how fast it's going by the time it reaches the 1.5 meter mark. The square root. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so that's what we've got going on with this. Some other questions like hey let's take the same object and now go ahead and hold it two meters above the ground and release it from rest. So now we're going to take this object like this, say that v initial is equal to a zero and we've got this y initial here, we've got the ground down here, some y final, you can say that this is equal to the two meter mark, this is equal to the zero meter mark just for a reference there. And we can ask about, well, by the time it reaches the ground, what is the change in kinetic energy? DC. So D, we'll go ahead, release it from S, and say, what is the change in kinetic energy by the time it reaches the ground? We'll begin, delta PE is equal to negative delta KE. So, what can we do with this? We can shift this around a little bit, but ultimately, we've got this, it's still mg delta Y is equal to negative delta KE. So that delta Ke is equal to negative mg delta y. Switch the signs, switch the order. Solving this out for delta Ke. And what do we get out of this? Well, in this particular case, delta y, since we're going from a higher elevation to a lower elevation, must be made negative. Delta y is equal to negative 2 meters here. Going down. That's something we've got to be careful of there. So we got delta Ke, the change in kinetic energy is going to be negative 3 kilograms times g times negative 2 meters. And what do we get out of this? We get positive, negative times negative, positive. 6 times g is 58.8 joules. Which should look somewhat familiar because that's how much we increase the potential energy when we threw it up and it reached its maximum height. So it went from having a change of potential energy of 58.8 joules to having a change in kinetic energy of 15 point, excuse me, of 58.8 joules. Ultimately, we just have this balancing act between them. I like to think of kind of energy cups in terms of conservative systems. You have that the fluid in the cups it represents the amount of energy in them, and ultimately you just have a transfer between the two cups. Kinetic goes into potential when it's going up, it loses kinetic energy, gains potential energy, and then potential goes back into kinetic as it comes back down. The potential energy gets released and increases the kinetic energy, but the amount of fluid is always the same, representing the conservation of energy. So this is what we have, which can be used at any moment, in time while just the gravitational forces act in this case. And that's it.